Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Kelly from My Soulful Home. Today I'm going to teach you 20 lessons to make you a better decorator. After watching the video, you're gonna have more confidence in your decorating, you're gonna become a more skilled decorator, and therefore you're gonna be happier in your home. I've helped countless people become happier in their home by teaching them how to decorate. The first lesson to becoming a better decorator for today is give your room some space. Give it some room to breathe. Most people have too much stuff. We all know that, lots of stuff, but I'm not even talking about clutter today. I'm talking about furniture. You might just have too many pieces in one room. And so then it's feeling a little closed in, a little claustrophobic. It really can do wonders just removing some furniture and then just see how the room it is works. You don't have to give it away. You don't have to put it on the curb and put a sign that says free. Just try it out. Take some pieces out. Give the room some uh, chance to breathe, really. Give it some space and see how it works for you then. Draperies. This is the second lesson for today. You really want to hang your drapes or curtains as high as possible. So get them as close to the ceiling as possible. Don't just put the rod right above the window frame. So go up, it's gonna bring the eye up and it's just gonna make the room look bigger and more expansive. And then do not have high water drapes or curtains. They wanna to go to the ground and ideally there's a really nice crease in them. Um, you can try puddling, but that's like, you know, like advanced decorating. And also it doesn't work with every fabric and doesn't work with every look. But the really nice tailored crease kind of will work with any look from a, you know, traditional to a more contemporary look. So um, give that a try. It's probably about an inch and a half uh, that you would need that's uh, you know longer than the measurement from the see where the wall meets the ceiling to the floor uh, to ha really have this like nice crease and then you could decide do you want to tilt the crease up or tilt the crease in that's really up to you it's uh, you know really just personal preference our third lesson in becoming a better decorator for today is less is more on the mantle the mantle place is generally a focal point in your room, whether it be a family room or a living room, or if you're really lucky, a bedroom. Um, and you don't want to clutter it with too many things. Uh, maybe a really nice piece of arc leaning and a couple of candlesticks on either side to get some symmetry. Just limit it. Don't make it the place that you put an entire collection. I think that that's... Um, it's not really enhancing the look of the mantle by having too many things on it. The fourth lesson for becoming a better decorator is to display your collections together. Now, I just mentioned not displaying them on the mantle, but you might find a place in your home, whether it's some open shelving or a china cabinet that you've repurposed or, uh, or an open hutch, something like that, where you could display a collection that you love. Now, when you display your collection on moss, if you will, all together, it has real decorative impact and it makes a real statement. I collect ironstone. I try to get only the real deal, but I do uh, have some other pieces that are not real ironstone, but it's all white. It's all creamy colored and I display it all in one place in this cabinet in my living room. And I think it really makes a statement altogether. Rather than having a couple pieces here and a couple pieces there, putting it all together uh, has real visual impact in your decor. The fifth lesson in becoming a better decorator for today is use decor books as decor. Oh, you get to read them, they're beautiful, but then you can use them as stacks just simply out on your coffee table, or you can use them as risers. They're a wonderful way to add some height to smaller pieces or to add into your vignettes, and then you get to read them. Fantastic. Um, and it also gives a little personality because more than likely you're going to choose books that are reflective of the decorating style that you love or the gardening style that you love. So it adds this personal element as well. I have a tip as far as purchasing them on Amazon. There are a lot of people that sell used books and the used decor books are usually in really good shape. So you'll find a number of sellers and they'll even give you the quality of the book uh, so you can make a choice as to which one uh, you know, you'd know you rather pay for. Uh, they're definitely markedly less than the, the books that you would buy firsthand. 
Of course, you can only buy my book firsthand. Thank you very much. But um, you can also go to your local library. My local library here has a wonderful used book section, a little shop uh, that, that's operated by volunteers. And you can go in and literally get these books for like two bucks. So if you uh, haven't explored that yet in your local library, definitely give them a call or buzz by and see. They might not have an actual store, but maybe they have a sale once or twice a year. Our sixth lesson for today is balance your rooms. So you want to balance the decor, not only the number of items that you have, but the visual weight of each item. Now, I think this is such a vital part of getting decorating right that I did an entire video just on this subject. So I'm going to put the link to that in the description of this video, but it is something that you really should learn about. So watch the video. Shoot me a question in the comments if you have any follow-up questions after watching it. It is so important. And the thing about balance in your decor is when it's wrong, the whole room's going to feel off. But when you get it right, and I know you will, you could just feel it. The seventh lesson for becoming a better decorator for today is to mix wooden pieces with painted pieces, with metal and with glass. Mix it all up. That's what really gives interest to a room. Uh, mixing styles is perfectly okay. In fact, I encourage you to do that, but definitely mixing materials. We're looking up for lesson number eight. Treat your ceiling like the fifth wall. It's such an opportunity to add interest to a room and people just gloss over it. They painted ceiling white and leave it at that. My goodness, there are so many things that you can do to a ceiling to add interest, not only to that, surface but also to the entire room and therefore your entire uh, decorating plan for your home. You can do things like just paint it a different color. You could add a few drops of the wall color to the white that you're using and that'll sort of you know enhance the, the overall look so it won't be so stark from ceiling white to whatever color you have on the wall. You could put wallpaper on it. You could put ceiling tiles. You could plank it. I've done planking all over this house. I've also painted ceilings, uh, metallic silver in my daughter's room, and we have tin ceilings in the dining room. I love using the ceiling as the fifth wall, and I encourage you to do that in your home too. We were up, now we're going down for lesson nine. Lesson nine is to add a rug under your dining room table. If you don't have one there, you might not have one because you have kids or you have dogs or you just never really thought you needed one. Well, you do need one. It makes such a difference. And for years, I didn't have one because I have kids, I have dogs, but I still have kids and I still have dogs. And now I have a rug under my dining room table and it makes the room so much more complete. and my tip for you when you're choosing a rug for under your dining room table is make sure that it's big enough. You don't want to have the chairs holding on for dear life to the edge of the rug. You want the person who's sitting in the chair to be able to pull it out and the chair legs, all four of them, still be on the rug. Lesson number 10 for today is create a beautiful vignette and leave it at your front door in your entryway so you can see it coming and going. So it greets you when you come into your house. That is going to make you instantly happier when you come home. You can have it just be absolutely beautiful or and you can have it work with the seasons. This is what I've got going on at my front door right now. So you'll see this in some other photos up close, but these are some sweet peas from my garden. Oh my gosh, these are the easiest flowers to grow throw some seeds in the ground and this happens and they smell so great. And then I got this little nest when I was down at Rogers Gardens down in uh, OC not too long ago. And because it's springtime, even though it's after Easter, I've got these three little eggs in there. And then this, just this little catch pot to round out the vignette. Cause we always want to do it in threes. I keep it on a tray and really a pitcher always stays in my vignette by the front door and usually there's a little candle and then there's a third piece. It's so easy to just switch it in and out, but it makes it so, so pleasant to walk in and see this. So I hope you got something useful out of the 10 lessons to be a better decorator that I shared today. For the first 10 lessons, which is the first in the series of videos that we'll be doing on uh, 
giving you lessons to be a better decorator. I'm going to put the link to the video in the description here. So you'll get all 20. And if you like this whole idea of getting lessons to become a better decorator, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a message in the comments, and please subscribe if you're enjoying it, because we're going to keep on going. And we're going to have lots more lessons to help you become a better decorator coming at you soon. Thank you. Bye.